Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our program on pregnancy and infant loss presented by the Pale Network. I'm Julia Campbell, the Adult Services Librarian at the Ajax Library. I would like to begin this program by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is situated within the traditional and treaty territory of the Mississaugas. More specifically, the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, signatories of the Gunshot Treaty of 1788 and the Williams Treaty of 1923. This land is and will continue to be home to the Indigenous peoples. Let us acknowledge the mistakes and traumas of the past through authenticity and support truth and reconciliation. Let us engage and celebrate Indigenous communities by being leaders of action and acknowledging the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's recommendation towards truth and reconciliation. Let us keep these principles close as we continue towards truth and reconciliation and as we move forward with kindness and respect as a community. Our presenter for this evening is Melody Ford from the Pale Network. Melody is a volunteer peer support facilitator from, with Pale Network and the support Melody received from Pale Network after her son died was an integral part of her healing journey. Melody wanted to help others in their journeys while at the same time creating a legacy for her son. She began volunteering with Pale Network in 2013 and has held a variety of volunteer positions, including intake, phone support, online support, and facilitation of peer-led groups. Melody has also been able to use her experience to mentor and support other volunteers. We are very lucky to have her with us this evening. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Melody to begin her presentation. Thank you, Julia. So welcome everybody to Ajax Library's presentation on the Pregnancy and Infant Loss Network. This is a casual opportunity to hear more about Pale Network. We'll discuss Pale's history, the support programs we offer, and the awareness we provide. And we'll also talk about our volunteer program. Um, we'll also discuss how you can assist somebody who is or has, is, is going through or has been through a loss. Um, please feel free to keep your video on or off and use the chat button, whatever works best for you. So what is Pale Network? Who is Pale Network? Pale Network has been around for over 25 years. It began as a nonprofit organization created by some bereaved parents who realized that there weren't very many resources available for them. In 2015, the provincial government enacted Bill 141 it was unanimously passed in the House of Commons, and the bill enacted the Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness, Research, and Care Act. This act required research to be undertaken and programs to be developed for pregnancy and infant loss. It also proclaims October 15th as Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Day. Pell Network became a program of the Sunnybrook Health and Science Center in January of 2017, and Pale Network still reaches throughout all of Ontario. One of the biggest parts of Pale Network are our peer-led support groups. Before COVID hit, we had mixed loss community circles of support groups in, I believe it was over 25 areas across Ontario. These groups were met in person and met usually once a month. Now, all of our groups are online. We use the Zoom platform and we have, it's optional if you want to use your video or audio or you can just use the chat feature. These groups are generally held twice a month at 8 o'clock p.m. They are a mixed loss group which is for any type of loss and then there's loss specific groups based on your type of loss. They are sorted by the first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, infant and neonatal loss, termination of pregnancy and uh, SIDS. We also have now a daytime mixed loss group that meets once a month during the day. These groups are can be in-person talking groups, although if you don't wanna talk, that's perfectly fine. If you're not ready, you can just sit and observe. Um, and people share their stories and hear the experiences about others' experiences. Oftentimes in group, People will share something that's happened to them or a struggle that they're experiencing and the other people will, they understand and they've been there before and it's just a nice, it's not nice for what it is, but for what it is, it's a nice experience. 
So these groups are all open groups. There's no start date, there's no end date, there's no waiting list. You can join them at any time after you make a request for support through the Pale Network's website. Some people have come for months, some people have come for years, some people have only come once, some just drop by during difficult bereavement anniversaries or milestones or on holidays. Pale Network also offers one-on-one -on -one phone support. It's on the old school telephone. And in that, um, you do the same thing. You make a request through the website and Pale tries as hard as it possibly can to match families with a volunteer who has also gone through that type of loss. For example, if you have um, had a termination of pregnancy, we will match you with somebody else who's had to terminate their pregnancy. And Pale Network also has a subsequent pregnancy online group. Um, we know that when people are pregnant following a loss, they still can be grieving and they have new fears around their new pregnancy. We also know that seeing a pregnant person in a group can be triggering for bereaved families and that also not all pregnant people are comfortable being in groups. Unlike the other groups, these, the subsequent pregnancy group, you register for a six week series but you're free to attend as many series as you would like. Pale does have printed resources. We have Pale Network brochures. They're available at no cost. And we have Pale Network booklets. These booklets are available at no cost to families, um, but there is a nominal fee for healthcare professionals for these booklets. And we have booklets on uh, miscarriages, pregnancy after loss, um, supporting siblings, stillbirth, infant death, and termination of pregnancy. And they're available in many different languages. So if healthcare providers, if families and healthcare providers can just go to the website and request to order either brochures or booklets. Another thing that Pale Network does is provide education for the healthcare providers. We have, various different options that we share with these healthcare providers. And our website has up-to-date information. It has downloadable things that you can use and evidence-based resources um, and information. It also has information that you can share with the families that you serve. So if you're a, if you're a healthcare professional, please go to our website and ch check out what there is. One of the big mandates that uh, Pale has also is surrounding awareness. And October is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. October 15th is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Day. And this year, Pale Network is offering uh, Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Kits. These complimentary kits are prepared. They include awareness material for families, to wear and share either publicly or in the comfort of your own home. Each kit comes with four buttons, a lapel pin, a vinyl cling decal, a plantable notepad, and butterfly tissues. I don't know if you can see, uh, but I have my, my button on. By participating in this awareness campaign, our hope is that more conversations around pregnancy loss and infant death will be had and bereaved families will be heard more. If you would like to order a kit, Please, again, I feel like a broken record. Please just go to our website and you can order a kit from there. Pre-COVID, we used to host family picnics for our brief families in the summer. And there was a walk to remember in October, but COVID um, has made it. So we're not, we're not having those this year. Um, but what we are having this year is a virtual wave of light. And on October the 15th, what happens is all around the world, people light candles at 7 p.m. for one hour to create a 24-hour global wave of light. Whether you're a parent, a grandparent, a sibling, a relative, even just a friend, we welcome you all to join us to bring a little bit of dark, a little bit of light into an otherwise dark world. It's actually really, as a brief parent myself, it's really lovely to get all of these. Um, texts and messages from my friends with candles lit, letting me know that they're thinking of me and 
of my son. And it's just, a, it's just a beautiful thing. And it's beautiful to think that all around the world, this is happening. So Pale is holding a virtual ceremony. Uh, the ceremony begins on October, uh, October 15th at 6.45 p.m. And the lighting ceremony will be at 7 p.m. to 7.15. The virtual candle will be lit until 8 o'clock uh, p.m. So you're welcome to stay on and you're welcome to not stay on, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, also, the CN Tower is usually lit up to recognize this day. Niagara Falls are usually lit up. There's, um, I think, I want to say Chicago, Cleveland, <clears throat> a lot of different places have um, have light, uh, lit, lit buildings and uh, things like that for October the 15th. And if you do a Google search, you may be able to find an event near you, but Pale is not doing events right now, again, because of, of COVID. So one of the things that we get asked a lot is how can we, how can, how can I support my loved one who has had a loss? What can I do to support them? And there's an author called Brene Brown, and she explains empathy in this short video that we're going to share. I hope. So what is empathy and why is it very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection. Sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy, it's very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions where empathy is relevant and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize their perspective as their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. <laughs> Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, and climb down. I know what it's like down here, and you're not alone. Sympathy is, ooh, <laughs> it's bad, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, no, you want a sandwich? <laughs> um, empathy is a choice, and it's a vulnerable choice, because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least. I had a, yeah. And we do it all the time. Because you know what? Someone just shared something with us that's incredibly painful, and we're trying to silver lining it. I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. Oh, at least you know you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have a marriage. <laughs> John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. So that was Brene Brown, and if you want to uh, watch that video again, you can just Google Brene Brown Empathy, <clears throat> excuse me, and that video will come up. I think it's really important, um, that video is very important, and she touches on a really important um, 
an idea, a really important idea. You can't fix somebody. You, you can't bring their baby back. You can't make things better for them. But what you can do is show up for them. You can hold space for them. You can be there for them. Pregnancy and Infant Loss Network is working really hard to provide an open space for people in a time of their grief, a space that's free from judgment or stigma. And that's exactly what you can do to help your loved one. We talk about peer support and we talk about this image often. It's, it's actually a perfect image. It's half a heart and half an ear. And peer support and what you can do for your loved one is compassionate listening. It's walking alongside of somebody and saying to them, tell me your story, I'm listening. It's holding that space for them, for them to share or vent or cry or be angry, whatever they need to do. It's not uh, counseling or giving them therapy or giving them any advice. It's not even having the answers. The only thing that really you can do is listen. <clears throat> and the other thing is that everybody's so very different that what may have worked for me might not work for your loved one. So really listening is, is key to helping your loved one. A lot of times we'll share things about what you shouldn't say. And it, I find that to be helpful often as well. Um, but there's also a reason behind why we share, why, why we say things are not good to share. As humans, I think it's in our nature to just generally throw out platitudes when we're faced with such a devastating loss. We don't really know what to say. We don't know what to do. Um, and none of these things make our loved ones feel any better. Just a few examples from this list. And again, this list is on our website. Is if you say to somebody, everything happens for a reason. You're, the meaning behind it is you're saying, I want you to find meaning in this. But the message people receive is I'm being punished or um, your child is in a better place. The message that you are trying to convey is that your faith believes that their baby is in a better place. But the message received by the bereaved person is what better place is there than my arms for my baby. So it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of not mixed messaging. It's just that the, the message is not received as it's intended. So we try to avoid those. Brene uh, Brown also mentioned it too. At least there's nothing good that can come out of the word at least. You never use the word at least. So how else can you support somebody? We, on our website, we have resources for families. They, um, there's uh, resources that can be downloaded. There's um, what family members can do, what friends can do, what coworkers can do, what employers can do. And you can download these PDF documents and share them with your loved ones, friends, family, coworkers, or your own too, if you're also going through the loss. And I would be amiss if I didn't mention our volunteer roles. Pale has a lot of volunteers. Our volunteers are the backbone of Pale. And there's two categories of volunteers. One is if you've had a loss, and the other is if you've not had a loss. For people who've had a loss, you can be a peer support volunteer, um, like I am, and that's you've had your own loss. And the reason we need that is because then we can say to somebody, I know I've been there. I don't know exactly what you're feeling, but I've been there and I have a very good understanding of what you're saying and what you're feeling. And we ask that they be around two years post bereavement date. It's not a fail proof method. Some people are ready earlier, some people are ready later, some people are never ready. But generally speaking, around two years is when people are in a place where they're able to give back and support others. So the, the peer support roles we have are our online supports, our phone supports. Um, and then the other type of support we have, which you can also do if you've had a loss, is our community outreach and awareness support uh, volunteers. And you don't necessarily have to have a loss for those. And this is volunteers who would distribute pale materials. It's a little different in COVID um, because we can't go to places that we would normally go to. 
uh, likewise event support where, where we have our virtual events, but nothing in person. So there's, we're not, we don't need people to help out. Um, we do have a lot of, um, a lot of community volunteers that help with um, like specific places and bringing awareness uh, to places. So if you're interested in that, Again, it's on, on the website. You can click under volunteers and uh, there's a bunch of information there. So that's it. That's, that's about the gist of the presentation. Um, you can keep in touch with us. If you have any questions, you can always email us at palenetwork at sunnybrook.ca. You can reach us on our website, which is palenetwork.ca, or you can just Google Pale Network Sunnybrook. And we have a closed Facebook group that you can uh, find under pregnancy and infant loss and in brackets, Pale Network. And um, I believe you have to ask, or you have to answer a few questions in order to get into that group in order to keep it a safe environment. So you have to um, have had a loss. I think you have to have, you have to live in Ontario. There may be one other, uh, one other thing, but I'm, I'm not sure. So don't quote me on that, please. And that's it. That's, um, that's all I have. And I want to thank you for listening. And um, it was it was great to be here. So thank you, Julia, for having me. And thank you to the Ajax Library. Uh, uh, awareness is great. I live in Durham. And I'm just so happy to be here. And I'm so happy that you gave us the opportunity to share. So thank you very much. Well, I would just like to thank you, Melody, so much for joining us tonight and for presenting on the amazing services that Pale Network provides, and also for providing information on how we can support those who are going through a loss. I think these conversations are so important. So thank you very much for being here. Thank and you. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their evening. And thank you for joining us tonight. Good night. Good night.